In this episode, we'll be looking at Python's OS module. The OS module covers lots and lots of different topics and has many functions and constants as a part of it. We'll be covering the highlights. Basically, I'll be talking about the parts that I use the most. So first of all, we have to import the OS module. And to give you an idea of what all the OS module contains, we'll do a dir on it. As you can see, you get a whole bunch of different functions and constants and whatnot. So let's take a look at a few of them. OS.name can be kind of handy. So let's take a look at that one first. That will tell you basically what kind of operating system you're under. So in this case, we get a POSIX. If you run it on, on Windows, you'll get an NT most of the time. If you run OS.environ, this will give you all the environment variables that are, that are set at this time. So my user is set to Michael. We have home set to my path, etc., etc. I know if I ran this on Windows, my my environment environment would be much bigger We can get our current directory. Well, not with this one. Let's get get the current directory. So we do cwd get current directory or current working directory. You'll see that it's automatically set to use as Michael documents. This will change, of course, depending on way, what system you're running on and, of course, what your name is. You can do a change to. If you call that, you actually have to provide a path. So the idea behind os.chdir is to change what your working directory is. So let's try it out. Let's try chdir. I'll change it to users desktop. Let's see if this works. And now we can take that one that we had before and run it again and see what's happened. So this allows us to change what our working directory is, which can be handy when you need to do that when you're running a script. All right, let's see what else we can do. Let's try get, get env. As you might guess, get env should show us the environment. We'll see what we'll get. I hope it as you can tell, it asks for a key. So to get this to work correctly, we need to pass out one of those keys that we learned about earlier. So this will get each item from our environment. And these are the keys, so like user, SSH, auth, auth sock, etc. That's pretty cool. Let's see what else we can do. Let's try out creating a directory with the OS module. So to do that, you just type OS dot make dir or mkdir. And if you just give it a name of a folder, it'll it'll put it into whatever our current working directory is. So if you do run this. I should create a directory. And we're not quite there yet, but I'm going to show you this early so that we can test whether or not this actually created something. So os.path.exists will tell us if we actually created this folder correctly. So let's pass it the, the path we have earlier, users, Michael desktop, and test. Let's see if we have a folder there. So that says it's true. Just so you guys know that I'm not pulling your chain, let's create, have it try to check for one that doesn't exist. So test two does not exist and it says it's false. There is a partner function in my mind and that's the os.makeDirs. MakeDirs is kind of cool because it'll actually create subfolders for you. So if we create, take this path from before, like users, Michael desktop. And let's go ahead and create test test two. But inside that we can create two more folders, foo bar. 
And this will actually create all those folders for you nested. If you try to do that with the first one, you'll end up with some problems. So let's say we do a test three foobar. I'm pretty sure this won't work. Yeah, because it doesn't it looks to see if test three exists and then it doesn't work. So make dirs will go ahead and create anything in here. If test two are test two already existed, it would create foo and bar. If foo existed, it would only create bar. So that's a really cool and handy way to create a bunch of directories. Now what do we want to do? What should we do if we want to actually remove some of this stuff that we've created? The OS module can help us there as well. So we have os.remove, and this can remove files. I don't really have any files that I want to delete, but basically you would just pass it the name of a file, so like test.txt. This would go ahead and delete the file. It's going to fail because I don't have one. But what if we wanted to remove that, fo that folder we just created above? Let's go ahead and try that. If you try it with os.remove, you will find out that it doesn't work very well because we're trying to remove a folder. But let's make sure it's much easier just to try it. Yeah, we get a permission error. Let's try this again with a different command. We'll change remove to rmdir or remove dir and see if that'll remove it. That appears to have successfully removed that folder. So now if we run os.path.exists against it, we get a false. So now you know how to remove a file and a folder with Python. Now, sometimes you don't like the way the folder turned out. Take that test two that we created earlier. What if we don't like the name of this folder anymore? Let's try changing that. I'm actually going to assign this to a variable so I don't have to type it out all the time. So we have path equals to this test2 directory, but we don't want to call it that anymore. So we're going to rename it from that to something a little bit different. Let's rename it. Well, we'll get there. We have to type all that path in again, even though I don't want to. Michael desktop. Instead of test, let's call it Python, uh, PyTest. So hopefully this will work. So let's go back and grab this and see if it exists anymore. It does not. So we know that we successfully changed the name somehow. We try PyTest. It'll return true because we've renamed it. The os.rename will actually work for both folders and files. Okay, we're ready to move on to looking at some other parts of the OS module. I went ahead and cleared out this screen up so that we can see how some of this works a little bit easier. So we have os.walk, and what it'll do is it'll walk over a directory in all of its files and subfolders. So let's take a look at how this works. So we have this path, dirs and files. Oops. Walk the path and then print out the root. All right, so as you can see, that prints out each folder and its subfolders. And if there had been any files in there, it would print those out as well. This is extremely useful for when you have to navigate through a bunch of folders and files and try to find a particular one. Occasionally, you'll want to go through it in the reverse order. And to do that, you can pass it top down equals false. So if we do this, it should go in the opposite direction. So as you can see, it basically went from the top folders and then backwards. So bar, then foo, then pytest, and then desktop. I've used this particular functionality when creating a deletion 
script so that it would delete files in the, in the most nested folder first. The reason you do this is that you can't usually delete a folder if it has stuff inside of it. So typically what you want to do is empty it of all the files and then delete the folder. There are some methods that will let you delete everything all at once. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to os.path, which actually has a bunch of functions all of it all by itself. So let's take a look at that. Whoops. So if we do a dir on os.path, we'll see that it has a bunch of stuff all by itself. I personally find os.path to be extremely useful. So let's take a look at it. So os.path.base name is quite helpful. Let's pass it the path we had from earlier. So in this case, os.path.base name will give us the base name, which happens to be desktop. This is useful for grabbing whatever the last item is in the path, whether it be the folder or the file. So if it had desktop slash file.txt, the base name would be file.txt. I use this all the time to grab parts of a path that I need to do an operation on. You can also do os.path.dirname and it will just return the, the directory of a path. So let's say we have some made up path like users someone something dot text. If you run this, it can tell that user someone is should be a directory and it pops it out for you. This is also extremely helpful because it'll give you the directory name every single time because it can tell what is a folder and what is a file most of the time. We already looked at os.path.exists, but we'll look at it one more time, just kind of as a kind of reminder. Basically, it'll tell you if the folder or file path that you pass to it exists or not. There are some similar functionality in, added to Python, and those are os.path.isdir. This will only tell you if the path is a directory. So in this case, our path is a directory and it returns true. Now if we use the other one, its sister method is file and pass it the same path, it's going to give us false because we're not passing it the path to a file. This is also useful. So you can use these in combination with that walk method up above and walk over stuff and make doubly sure that the file or folder that you need to grab is actually a file or folder. Now, for the most part, this OS.walk will do that for you. So really what I find useful is to say, if this is a file, I might want to store it off into a list because I'm going to do an operation only on files that end with a certain name. So I'll probably use this more for a way to determine what files I want to grab, kind of a filter type operation. All right, there's also a cool thing in the OS.path submodule and it is the join method. What I like about os.path.join is that you can join it with whatever you need to to create a valid path. So let's say we actually have a file called file.txt. It will join it to the path that we already have using the correct operator. So on Windows, you'll get a backslash instead of a forward slash, for example. And you can basically pass it a full list of items. So, you know, if you have a list of pat parts, I'll just show you how this works. So let's say we have um, that users. File dot text, and we want to put it all together. We can do that. So 
think we actually need to put something. No, oh, this does work. Okay, so always stop path join, and then you use the star to explode the items out of it. Basically, that tells Python to pass it in as each parameter instead of as a list. I believe if you don't have the star there, you'll end up with it just kind of a weird little thing. Yeah, you get just the, the list back. So you need the star to get the path back that you're looking for. Moving on, we have os.path.split. It's really easy to see what that does. It pops off the very ending end item of the path. Again, this is really useful if you need to like swap out where you're copying something. So let's say you want to copy a file from users Michael desktop to some user Michael other folder. You can use os.path.split to help you munge the path in the direction that you want from source to destination. At this point, you should be able to use Python's OS module to do all kinds of different things. And you can also take a look at the documentation to learn about all the stuff that I didn't cover in this episode. I hope you've learned a lot and that you've enjoyed watching this. Thanks again. See you next time.